Hello my dear students. My name is Mrs. Caroline Shaji and I am here to teach you a poem. The poem is from this class 9 book. The name of the book Beehive and the name of the chapter. I'm not going to reveal it right now but I'm going to tell you the lesson, the poem was written by a person who even wrote these lines. The lines are, The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Who wrote these words? Yes, the person who wrote these words is called Robert Frost and therefore we have a lesson in this book, a poem that is called The Road Not Taken. So let's take out The Road Not Taken and let us see what Robert Frost has to tell us. This well-known poem is about making choices and the choices that shape us. Robert Frost is an American poet who writes simply but insightfully about common and ordinary experiences. Okay, so before I begin with this lesson, let me tell you in brief what happens in the poem. There's a small story in that poem. What happens in the poem? A person is walking in a yellow wood. Now the word yellow, what would that represent? Yellow would represent the autumn season. The season during which leaves begin to fall down from the trees. And so the poet says, I was walking in a forest during the autumn season. And while walking in that forest, I came across a fork in the road. Now how does a fork in the road look? Can you see the picture? A fork in the road looks like a road diverging into two parts, two different roads. So I, when I walk along one path, I know where I'm going. But now when the road diverges in an unknown forest, how would I know? Which is the correct road to take? How would I guess? So the poet says, when I came to this fork in the road, I was in a dilemma. We could also pronounce it as dilemma. So I was in a confusion. I was in a confused state of mind. I could not decide which road to take. And so I looked down one road to where it was bending in the undergrowth but I could not see further and so I thought of taking the second road. Now he had his reasons for taking the second road. He says I took the second road because it wanted wear and it was grassy. It was more grassy than the other road. And so I kept the first road for another day and took the second road. And then at the end of the poem, he only says this much. I shall be telling this with a sigh, ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Now, the poet has very cleverly left the word sigh without any more words attached. No tag words. He could have said, I shall be telling this with a sigh of relief. Or, I shall be telling this with a sigh of regret. He does not say that. Very cleverly, he leaves that word sigh as sigh. So, it's up to the readers to think. It could be a sigh of relief or it could be a sigh of regret. That two roads diverged in a wood 
and I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. So the difference could be success and the difference could be failure as well. Isn't it? So let us read the poem and find out what Robert Frost wants to tell us. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. So like I told you, the poet was walking in a forest and suddenly he came to a fork in the road. So two roads diverged and I could not decide which road I should take. And sorry, I could not travel both. So as a traveler, I was feeling sorry because I could not take both the roads at the same time. So he says, and sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could. So I looked down the first road to see how far the road was going. But I could not see more than the undergrowth, the place where the road was bending. More than that, I could not see. So what is the meaning of undergrowth? Undergrowth means a very, very bushy area. It was full of bushes and I could not see further. That is what also happens with our life. Can you see your future? No, we, we can't. None of us can see our futures. But yes, to some extent, we could think, okay, tomorrow I'm going to be doing this and day after tomorrow, this is my plan. But what are we going to do 25 years hence? Nobody knows. And that's what Robert Frost is actually hinting at, which I will tell you later. But now let's get on with the literal meanings first. So he says, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. So the place where it was very bushy, beyond that I could not see. And then he says, then took the other, just as fair. Now I want you to mark that with a pencil, just as fair. You know, when we compare two things with the help of the words as or like, that is a figure of speech and that is called simile. S-I-M-I-L-E. Simile. So what is a simile? A simile is a literary device. It is a figure of speech which poets use to make their poems beautiful. And this figure of speech simile, it means comparing two things using the words like or as. So I would call that an indirect comparison. An indirect comparison between two unlike things. Two things which may not be the same and using the words like or as. So he says just as fair and having perhaps the better claim. So why did he choose the second road? Because it was grassy and wanted wear. So I would ask you to underline that sentence because it was grassy and wanted wear. When you are asked a question during an examination, why did the poet or why did the traveler choose the second road? Then you would have to write these two answers for two marks. He chose the second road because it was grassy and it wanted wear. Now, what do we find strange about these two words wanted wear? Can you see? Both the words begin with the same letter W. And that's what we would call another figure of speech, another literary device known as alliteration. A-L-L-I-T-E-R-A-T-I-O-N, alliteration. So you see, using a few words in the same line, beginning with the same letter, alliteration. So he says it wanted wear. Though as for that the passing there had warned them really about the same. On that particular day, both the roads were covered with 
were covered with leaves. Both the roads were filled with leaves. Now, why were the roads filled with leaves? I told you in the beginning, it was autumn season. And everybody knows, during autumn, leaves fall from the trees. And both the roads were filled up with leaves. So he still could not make a proper decision. And ultimately he says, And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Now, you would be asked to explain these two lines. Both that morning lay equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. What is the meaning of those lines? It means that on that particular morning, no one had walked on those roads, on both the roads. If someone had walked on the road, there would be footprints, black footprints. But there were no footprints of anyone walking there. And so the decision was a very important one. And the dilemma, the confusion was really great. He really did not know what to do. And he says, Oh, I kept the first for another day. I ultimately decided I'm not going to travel the first road. I'm going to travel on the second one. And like I already told you, he took the second one because it was grassy and wanted wear. And he says, I kept the first for another day. Yet, Knowing how way leads on to way, I doubt it if I should ever come back. Alright, so you know when we go on one way and then we move to another way and that way would lead to another way and then sometimes we never come back. We would never come back. And so the poet also had a similar doubt. I doubt it if I should ever come back. And he says, I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere, ages and ages hence. Now please mark that word sigh. So like I told you earlier, the word sigh does not reveal to us whether it was a sigh of relief or it was a sigh of regret. But he says, never mind, I will be telling this with a sigh many, 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 many years later. So he says, ages and ages hence, years and years later, I will be telling this with a sigh. And what shall I be telling? I shall be saying, two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less travelled by. I took the road which was less travelled by. It means it was not travelled by many people. Many people had not made use of this road. So, I took the path which was full of obstacles. I took the path which had more difficulties. I did not take an easy road. And that has made all the difference. Which means that decision in my life made all the difference. So, we could think that the poet got success. And also we could think that the poet got failure. Now, the question is, what do we think? So now, if you ever look up Google, you would find many answers. You would find answers that are supporting the sigh with a relief. And you would find answers that are supporting the sigh with a regret. I, as your teacher, would prefer to say that you could write both answers. Okay? Why? First of all, the poem says the road not taken, which means the poet is referring to the road which he did not take. Okay? The poet is referring to the, the road which he did not walk on. And he says that the road not taken sometimes might have given me more success. I don't even know. How would I? I did not travel that road. So he says, when I sit back in my old age, I would be thinking with a sigh that two roads 
diverged in a yellow wood and I did not take the first road. If I had taken the first road, probably I would have been more successful. Who knows? Now I was able to take only one road and that is my regret. So we could say that the poet sometimes regrets not having been able to take the first road. Why? Because he thinks that he might have been more successful if he had taken the first road. Is it clear to everybody? The explanation which I have given you, I hope that you have understood. And now, coming to the second part, it could be a sigh of relief. In which way? If you study the autobiography, all right, if you study the life of Robert Frost, what do we come to know? What is he talking about? He says, at the age of 42, at the age of 42, being an American poet was not fetching him any money. He was not at all a successful person even at 42. So, at 42, a person should have been highly successful in which way? He should have had his own house, he should have been married and he should be having a sustainable business, some good profession. And none of these things belonged to Robert Frost. He had none of these. So at the age of 42, he was just a simple and ordinary person, never having any fame. And so he longed to get famous. And so he had a very difficult decision to take. The decision was he had to quit America, leave everything that he had and go and settle in England. And you know something? That's what he did. He quit America and he went away to England. And it is in England that this man, Robert Frost, the poet, became famous. And his poems began to sell like hot cakes. Which means that his poems were selling really well. And he became moneyed, he became rich and he also became famous. And then he returned to America. So if we study the life of Robert Frost, we could say that he took the difficult road. He took a road that was not trodden by other people. But that road led him to success. Not only success, I would call that greater success. Clear? Now, this poem, The Road Not Taken, has got something which we would call in English symbolism. Why? Because the poet is not talking about any roads. He is talking about life. And this poem, the road, in this poem, the road symbolizes life. In life, we are always confronted with several choices and it is up to us which choice to take, what should we choose, what to choose. So, if we chose the beaten track, like everyone is going that road, so let me also follow. The kind of success which we would get will be the same as others. The people who dare to take untrodden roads, the people who dare to take up challenges in their lives, the people who dare to face difficulties, those are the people who get greater success. So a lesson to be learned from this poem is the one who dares to do something different, the one who dares to encounter challenges, the one who dares to face difficulties is the one to have greater success, to get heights in their lives. Is that clear to everyone? Now, I will be talking about the question and answers in another video. So till then, please wait and watch for my next video. Thank you children.